Okay, so uh, today, uh, Dennis Carey, okay, through okay. so here, Dr. Dennis Carey, and we're going to about the book he wrote, which is really cool. Yeah, where's the book? Here. Not tell it. You what? Yeah, top seller. Yeah, top seller. Okay, and Dennis will tell you about this. Uh, it's a wonderful, it won't be stopped, okay, you'll see. All right, and then we have Pat Gallagher, that most people know about him. Okay, historian, professor, teacher, so long, uh, both these people obviously long, long time, long reach people. Okay, so with that done, we'll start off with um, Dr. Dennis Carey. Thank you, Steve. Um, it's nice to see such a crowd here uh, out in the open uh, for a change. We've all been hiding away um, and uh, it's all still a little bit trepidatious about that. But anyway, um, so. This is a project that actually uh, Pat came to me about, and at first I thought he was a bit crazy, but as it's come along, it's worked in with the centennial celebration, and uh, the centennial is kind of slowly getting rolling, the celebration, um, and uh, hopefully that will pick up steam as we get into this, the real summer. Um, so, um, first slide. Yep. Silly me, I went to the wrong side of the chair. <laughs> So as you see, we have a number of maps all around the room, and we obtained these through Tom Salzman, um, who was the archivist for the town of Hempstead. And uh, um, just as a matter of orientation, I put up a map, a uh, couple of modern maps, just so you get an idea of where we're at. You have it in your mind, you drive over the bridges and everything. But um, So this shows the south shore of Long Island from Breezy Point to Jones Beach. Breezy being over here and Jones Beach being over here. Um, salient features are John F. Kennedy Airport, um, the Atlantic Beach Bridge, um, the town of Lawrence, and the other five towns going around in a circle. Um, we have Lindbrook, Rockwell Center, um, Oceanside, and Creekport's over here. I don't think it's on this map. Um, I want to point out the Blue there. Highway and the Meadowbrook um, Parkway. Um, next slide. So this map is a little bit closer, showing the Atlantic Beach Bridge, important markers, um, the East Rockaway Inlet, which is the way out on this side, on the western side of the Barry Beach. Um, this is, these lines here are all swamp land and marshes across from Long Beach, and that's an important part of the history. Down here in this corner um, is the Cedar Hurst Yacht Club, which has been here since the um, 1880s or so, and the Lawrence Beach Club, which is uh, over 125 years as well. Um, next slide. So here is Long Beach as we see it today in a great technique. Um, at Google. Uh, an important marker is Hicks Beach. Hicks Beach is a swamp land across from the west end of Long Beach. And uh, you can see here, this is New York Avenue, uh, where everything nar narrows a bit. Um, an important marker is the Long Island Railroad um, trestle across uh, the channel. Um, in the past, this was called Wreck Lead, and on some maps, it's still called Wreck Lead. Um, you may have Heard that lead is simply a word that means a body of water, like a channel. Um, and here's a section of Long Beach we know as the canals, and of course Island Park, just to the north of the Barrier Beach. Uh, the Island Park over here, you have uh, Shelter Island, and uh, uh, then down to here, one of the commonalities for the whole transition is the, the train track. That's been consistent through it. It, it, it was kind of meanders down here. Uh, uh, Where is Shelter Island? The train tracks are right here. No, you said Shelter Island. Right? Uh, I was going to say uh, Harbor Island. Oh, Harbor Island. Oh. Good catch, good catch. Shelter Island does come I want to see if you're awake yeah. out there. Yeah. So, but the, the important thing is to know this is the key thing in all the maps. It's one of the consistent things that we'll be seeing. Next slide. I just added these slides to this presentation because I wanted to point out the Mill River. Anybody familiar with the Mill River? Anybody? Okay, so Mill River um, is a uh, ancient waterway uh, that goes right through East Rockaway here. 
And you've crossed it many times if you've left Long Beach through the Long Beach Bridge, you've gone up Lawson Boulevard and Ocean Avenue, and you can see this river kind of comes down here all the way, and almost like it goes all the way to the sea. I'll show you one slide more further north. So this arrow is pointed to the Tanglewood Preserve. You're probably familiar with that. Um, so this river goes all the way up through Tanglewood and actually um, disappears in the Hempstead Lake Park. So that's all, it's all connected in the distant past and perhaps um, in ancient times went even further <coughs> north on the island of Long Island. Next slide. So this is the first of our ancient maps, our antique maps. This is a map of Long Beach in um, 1873. Um, Ulysses S. Grant was the President of the United States at that time, so we're talking a little bit post-Civil War. Um, a couple of things to point out on this map of circle here is Bannister Creek. Bannister Creek is just east of the Atlantic Beach Bridge on the other side. Um, Hicks Beach, once again, is here. Um, you can see that there's an opening to the ocean where New York Avenue um, would be and the West End would be in the future. Uh, one of the key aspects of this map is that here's, here's a body of land here, here's a body of land here, another body of land, body of land, body of land. All these, some people refer to Long Beach as the seven islands of Long Beach, or the five or six islands of Long Beach. Um, so this was the main two parts that were referred to as Long Beach, but you can see they're two different islands. Um, this uh, arrow is following the route of the uh, Blue Parkway um, through Alder or Elder Island over to Meadow Island. And over here, um, this arrow points out something that was called the Meadow River or Meadow Brook, which is the line of the Meadow Brook uh, Parkway. Um, this is um, That's Freeport, Free, Freeport um, Christian Hook, which is uh, modern day Oceanside, and Pearsalls, which is modern day Lindbrook. Um, east, um, Rockaway would, would be down here, um, was formerly called Near Rockaway. And the reason for near and far has to do with how close um, the towns or the areas were to the town of Hempstead, which would be further to the north up here. So Near Rockaway was close to the town of Hempstead, Far Rockaway was further away. And that was yeah. switched over to East Rockaway about 100 years ago. Now I'm going to be developing in, in the conversation. You see this area has all the different uh, bodies of water that kind of run through it. And we know this is uh, eventually turned out to be Long Beach. But what a lot of people in Long Beach don't know is that as the Reynolds Field is in, the, the area that we're looking at, and he filled this in, the, the, the island became much bigger. But the, the, the old uh, areas were in water, see this is water, that, that was all filled in. That's the low-lying parts of Long Beach. And during the hurricane, that's the areas that people say, well, how come my block got flooded and the other block didn't get flooded? And I point to where my house is, I'm like right on this island in this area. I, I barely even got any water in my house at all. And there are people on Hudson Street that flooded four foot. So yeah, that becomes one of the themes that we try to uh, develop in, in the presentation. Okay. Just want to point out here, Deb Wright, this, this circle here represents Deb Wright. Um, Deb Wright, or Davenport Deb Wright, was the first person to put up a house on what was known as Long Beach, approximately New York Avenue. Um, um, for better or for worse, it was washed away in a big storm about a year later. Um, on June 4th, along with the major celebration um, in um, Town Plaza, there will be a, de a rededication of a plaque to Deb Wright at uh, New York Avenue, um, which is another part of the celebration. The next slide. This is just a um, blow up of what we just saw. I put this arrows here, once again, this is where the Cedarhurst um, Yacht Club was and Lawrence Beach Club. Um, here, you can see there's land on either side, and uh, basically, during the, you know, the earlier parts of the times, maybe even going into the 1920s and 30s, um, they would have a ferry that crossed over to bring people to the ocean beach. Um, my mother actually used to tell us about that. She said there was a, there was a pulley across the, the body of water 
that, that ran under the water and over. They basically didn't row or sail across. They pulled the ferry across and bringing kids and adults to swim and, at the ocean. And this map over here is the copy of that map. So when you're walking around and you're looking at it, this is the same map. And this area right over here uh, is probably where the, the canals are today. And again, low-lying area. And as you know, anybody who lives in the canals knows how bad they've been flooded. Okay. Okay. Next slide. Dennis? Next. Okay, so a little bit the beginning, the beginnings of history. Well, we have here a barrier island um, and some sections. We can still see it looks like this, where basically with uh, marsh grass and sand and the ocean. Um, the, obviously, Native Americans came here in the distant past. They came to fish, to hunt, to, to uh, gather um, shellfish. Um, and to find wampum. And uh, next along came the baymen, the oystermen, and a group called the Wreckers. The Wreckers were actually legitimate pirates who, with a salvage, so to speak, um, the goods from ships that went down in the um, areas around the island or off the island, and they actually got um, some money from the government because the government didn't want to lose the taxes that were lost on the goods that were coming coming in. Some of these wreckers weren't so good and they were more like pirates and they led the, the, the craft into the shallows so that they could wreck up. Yeah, but over here you have the population and you see that in 1920, which we were at the 100th anniversary, we had uh, 282 people. But again, that doesn't speak to the real population. Uh, that was 282 people that registered to be in Long Beach, but there were many people who came here in the summertime who were from main, mainland. Then you see the, the growing population uh, through the 40s and then a major change in the 50s to the 60s and to the 70s where the population really took off. The other thing I wanted to mention while we have this picture, I didn't mention it the, the other day, but you, you, you see this area is clear of uh, groins. There was uh, most people in Long Beach called the jetties. And um, the, part of the history of Long Beach is tied into the groins and the jetties. And, we, we haven't developed that that well, but that is a the history of it. Was they were initially made out of wood, then they made them, they, they brought in the stones, and then they they they, they used to dump them. Now they kind of ar architecturally designed them, if you will. So uh, this is a clear area uh, without the growing fields. Next slide. So the the shells along the shore were very um, important to the Native Americans. Um, they were especially interested in the purple um, rim of the quag, the quahog, um, the clamshells, and uh, they made it beautiful wampum, which was both decorative and, and it was a, a means of uh, cash, so to speak, um, to trade. Um, the next slide. So the kind of the written history of Long Beach um, pretty much begins in 1837 with the wreck of a sailing ship coming from England, uh, mainly with Irish um, and English passengers. And this ship um, wrecked in 1837, near the end of the presidency of Andrew Jackson, just to give you a little perspective. Um, just about everybody was lost. Uh, some of the crew, about seven or eight people, were rescued by a, a dory or a, a, a fishing boat that came out in this major northeaster. Um, and the people who remained behind, well over 100, um, died of exposure and, and, and were drowned. Is that the plaque that's on the boardwalk? That's the yeah. plaque that's around Lincoln, Lincoln Boulevard. Um, the people speculate that that may be one site um, where the uh, ship was wrecked. Um, I heard somewhat recently that, well, they put in the new jetties a couple of years ago that the, uh, the government actually points it closer to New York Avenue. Wow. Uh, but and anyways, that was a, uh, Walt Whitman was a young, uh, young boy at that time, and he actually came down and helped um, remove um, some of the, uh, the, the bodies that were on the shore. That line right here, in the morning, I, I helped pick up the dead and lay them in rows in the barn. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, they're buried, uh, this is true, they're buried up in uh, the Brook area? Yeah, in the, basically a, an ocean in Merrick, there's a cemetery right there, you probably have passed it, and there's a big, obelisk that uh, it combines the, um, the victims of the Mexico and also a ship 
the bristle that sank off the um, Rockaways about a month before. Um, so, next slide. So, um, the next episode during the presidency of Rutherford B. Hayes is the 1880 Long Beach Hotel. This hotel was built by the Long Island Railroad to be a competition with the hotels in Brighton Beach, the Oriental, the, the Manhattan, built by um, a fellow named Austin Corbin. Austin Corbin is often said to be the one who built the Long Beach Hotel, but that's not true. It was, uh, the president was Thomas R. Sharp. Uh, Corbin did get involved with Long Beach about a year, two years later. Um, in fact, he wasn't so pro Long Beach because it was in competition with his other um, hotels. Uh, this hotel was uh, 900 feet long. Um, it was 225 feet wide, had over 700 rooms. You can see it was quite beautiful in the Queen Anne um, Victorian um, fashion. It was pretty right near the shore. There was a chapel um, to the right. Um, that would be to the east. Um, in 1882, Oscar Wilde, um, during his uh, uh, transcontinental tour of the United States, actually probably before he became fairly famous, uh, visited Long Beach. In 1894, there was a summer parliament uh, by uh, Methodist, which was actually like a college for the burgeoning middle class, where you could actually get a, somewhat of a diploma for um, getting involved with the with the arts, science, as well as religion. And it was, uh, was until 1897 that a macadamized road uh, was built across Barnum Island, which is modern day Island Park. Yeah, we're gonna see pictures of that in a few minutes. The next slide. So where was that hotel? Yeah. Good question. Okay, so this is uh, a blow up of this map that's over here, which you can take a look at. Uh, this map was put together by Ron Paganini, the son Ron Paganini, about, what is Ron here? Yep, mm -hmm. Ron. <laughs> okay, um, that was in the year 2000. Was that for a school, school project, Ron? What's that? Was that initially for a school project or historical? No, that's, that was an accumulation of many years in the historical society. And basically, <coughs> We found the artifacts of the hotels, 99.9, .9, the artifacts. And they were all burnt, we had a fire line, and that pinpointed where the hotel was, and then I started making the map. Okay. Yeah. So, so, you can see this, this picture of the hotel straddles Riverside Boulevard. So, it may have been a little bit more to the west, to maybe a third on Riverside, but uh, close enough. These white lines, for the most part, are modern day streets. They didn't exist um, back in the 1880s, all the way up into, well into the 1900s. Um, the railroad came in at the angle that it currently comes in, but swung very far west and came in all the way to the shore behind the One Beach Hotel. Um, it was actually a, road, a railway line, a secondary railroad line called the Marine Railway that um, went out to Point Lookout um, the, this Lucis Inlet at one time, uh, it's Lucis Bay there, but it, it also broke through to, to the ocean as these inlets changed over years, if not decades. What, what, Ron, what Ron did was he did a composite here, uh, we did crossing over a period of time. You can see by the, this area where this is eventually filled in, and even filled in, filled in. And then, uh, but you see here the groins that we've been talking about, but they weren't there at this time. They were added much later. So this is a composite map showing you a variety of things that are happening over a period of probably 40 or 50 years. And I point out, Inner Beach lead and the island of Inner Beach which has other, other, other names, which I'm gonna point out again in a moment. Next slide. So this is a photograph taken from that Inner Beach island to the north. This body of water is not Reynolds Channel, it's the Inner Beach Lead, okay? And so you can see the hotel fairly clearly, um, and you can see people bathing here, people sailing, boats along the shore. So this uh, is the wood bridge that, uh, if you go back one, uh, this bridge here, okay? So that picture is taken from about here, looking this way. And again, this is all filled land today. And again, the, that's a low-lying land 
in Long Beach, where the flooding occurred became much worse. And this was the area of the canals. Next slide and the next one. So, I mean, the, in the 1880s to um, through the next 25 years or so, this was a very popular site. It was never financially very good and had went in and out of receivership. Um, but uh, this was a place where the, the well healed, the money set um, from the New York metropolitan area and from all around the country um, would come to summer um, away from the heat and uh, be entertained. There were some wee cottages, about 22 to 23 of them, stringing along the dunes and the shore to the east, um, which, besides the hotel, were the first um, um, real dwellings. Um, there was a band show, but they had twice a day concerts um, throughout its time period. So the population of Long Beach was very small at the time, and it was, it was, a, it was really a summer event. Yeah, it was only a summer event. There was, there was, yeah, the hotel was shut down. Once, Labor Day rolled around, <coughs> like it, it was for many, many years later. Um, next. So this map points out a number of things. Um, once again, you can see the railroad trestle. You can see the line of uh, cottages going to the east um, towards uh, Lido and Point Lookout. Um, you can see this inlet, which used to be right here compared to Hicks Beach, is now further to the west. And here is a, a land which you saw before. It's called Black's Beach or Rockaway Beach and the Bay of Far Rockaway. Can anybody tell me where the Bay of Far Rockaway is nowadays? It doesn't, it doesn't exist. exist, does it? No, it doesn't exist. Oh, uh, so once again, this, these islands, these barriers were changing. Um, the name, the, 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 the name doesn't exist anymore, but the area is still there. Well, some of it, yes. But uh, um, you can see the Loop Parkway once again, and you can see how much marshland there 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 is both on the this barrier beach and um, to the interior. Once again, the Lawrence Beach Club um, across the Lawrence they call this Lawrence Beach um, across from where the actual beach would be. Next slide. So. Um, this family, the Detchens, as well as a couple other families, came to the west end of what would become the west end of Long Beach um, in the um, mid to late um, beginning of the last century. Um, the Detchen family had this one room place that they got dragged in by horses for $25 for the season. Um, they put up a tent that's off the picture. The boys slept in the tent, the girls slept in the house, and uh, it was that, that's where they. Um, they cooked everything outside. They sunk um, big um, vats into the sand for their refrigeration, if you will. Um, and they named their place Silver Wave. There were other places called Frying Pan, Kitchen Boomy. Um, and uh, so that's sort of the beginning of the West End. On Grand Boulevard and about Grand Boulevard and uh, close to Olive um, was the U.S. Life Saving Station. Um, this picture is from 1907, taken by the Detchen family, um, showing a breeches boy here that, that was actually a ride for the kids, and some of the, the men either working out or playing at that time. So there was, there was nothing but sand dunes in the West End in 1907, important point. Next slide. So about this time, um, the name that everybody should recognize, um, Reynolds, Senator William H. Reynolds, um, came on the scene. He was the president of Dreamland. He was the developer of several Brooklyn projects, including uh, um, Borough Park and Queens, Moralton. And uh, we we're having some debate, even among uh, local historians, did he really come in December of 1906 or was it 1905? Um, but it was described that he first came to Long Beach in December, um, and by um, April, uh, second, the town of Hempstead had a vote to not, not give him title to the land of those islands we saw, but rather to give the syndicate, which was called the Estates of Long Beach. Um, they had already, sometime between December of 06 or 05, they had purchased the hotel and the lands around the hotel um, from 
the previous owners. Reynolds didn't think he had enough, he had an immediate vision, he didn't think he had enough for it. So he said, let's buy the swampland too. Let's buy the water too. <laughs> so he went to the town of Hempstead, and on April 2nd they had a referendum, it was Proposition 2, and we'll blow that up in a second. Prior, in the months before that, Reynolds ran around um, the area of town of Hempstead convincing the townspeople that they should um, vote in favor because they would increase their tax revenues. And um, he had previously been a state senator, not a U.S. senator, he was a state senator, the youngest state senator in New York history at that time. Um, and uh, he only served one term, but his friends always called him senator afterwards. If you, if you called the ex-senator, you, you were not his friend, probably. So from this point on, we're going to be talking an awful lot about Reynolds. Reynolds becomes the key player uh, when we get into this in uh, 1907. And again, we're going to show you in the next slide the, the excerpt of what it was they, they got from Tanis for a very minor amount of money. So, so you want to do it? Yeah. Uh, no, you can go ahead and do it now. Thank you. So um, the proposition was to sell, um, convey it to the estates of Long Beach. Um, it was approximately uh, 1,084 acres um, uh, for a price of 108,400. Um, so uh, that's what he bought it for. Um, and the proposition passed in April um, of 1907. Yeah, but there's a lot of things happening in that time period yeah. that, that, that tied into the development. And some of it was not very good for, for Reynolds. So go ahead. So that was April. This is July 30th, um, the same year, 1907. <laughs> this, is the, this is the beautiful Long Beach Hotel, which burned down um, in the middle of the, the season. Uh, approximately fire broke out at 5 a.m. and spread relatively rapidly. Um, all that's left here is the um, mammoth chimney, um, six or seven stories high. Um, Nobody sure. died. Um, uh, miraculously, nobody died. Um, not, why the fire started, there's a lot of speculation, nobody knows. Uh, some people even go so far as that Riddles want to start all over, and uh, he burned it down, but uh, so I don't he think was he... was a developer. Yeah. I, I don't know, uh, I don't think that was the this case. Was, this is what Ron was referring to before, Ron, where the, uh, the, 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 the charred remains that you found and the ground. And then the other thing, this picture is being taken from the west, looking east. These are the uh, the different uh, houses that that, uh, that Dennis was referring to yeah. before. Cottage number, the chapel and cottage number one to the end. Where Reynolds is on the scene. Um, now you see this map in full, once again, the pack in any map. Um, the, the blue, the dark blue here is the, is the waterways, the main ocean, and Reynolds Channel as we know them today. Um, the brown is land mass, uh, whether it was swamp or sand dunes. And the green area is area that was water and is now land. And if you can look closely, here's this red line. You see the jack right by the Lindell School. Yeah, that's um, the Lindell School right here and, in the corner. And he's follow it out, um, likewise along the South Shore. So that, think back to the picture I showed you in the beginning of the current map of Long Beach, and this is uh, basically the land mass. So once Reynolds had that, he, he had already had it planned going. You can see here this piece of land, which is called Inner Beach or Queens Water. Um, also, it had been called Hog Island Beach in the past. Um, this is, would be Island Park, the Great Bar Hassock, um, East Rockaway Inlet. Once again, this is the West End. Um, again, Open to the sea. Right. Open, open to the right sea. Right here would be Hudson Street. <laughs> and you see that why Hudson was hit pretty bad in the, the, the storm and was flooded at a much higher. So people over here were four or five feet. Uh, people over here or over here at much higher. And you, you actually look down the block and you get low. You can see the streets going down and going up. So um, Reynolds hired. Um, the uh, Atlantic Pacific and Gulf Dredging Company, um, which had 
just been working on the Panama Canal, and at that time, this was the largest private dredging um, operation that had ever been um, occurred in the world. Um, they had three large um, dredge boats. This would be one of them, uh, the Pittsburgh, the Florida, and the George W. Katz. And they went to work in roughly November or December of 1907. So possibly Reynolds first came in December of the 6th, and by one year later, um, the dredging was going full, um, full pace. Um, it was before the hotel burned down in July, the, the concrete and the boards for the boardwalk were already being laid out along, along the line. Um, and uh, that's approximately when the elephants came in and uh, um, started um, help build the, build the uh, boardwalk. Well, I'd say that was just a publicity stunt. Certainly there's pictures of elephants taking houses and timber from one place to the other. And they apparently were in Long Beach from October to December when the weather became too cold and they went back to Dreamland, um, which was Riddle's um, Park in Coney Island. And you go over here, this area would be where the uh, walks are, Grand Boulevard to um, uh, Grand Boulevard over to Lindell. And you can see this is the area that got badly flooded. If you know anything about the walks, they got hit very hard to the west side and not to the east side. Next slide. So, about the time that William McKinley was president, 1897, um, this island of Queenswater existed, also called Inner Beach. And this is a map from uh, the 1800s, I think it's 1887. Yes, 1897, sorry. Um, and I've circled here, you can't read it very easily, but Benjamin Molitor had a hotel, the Queenswater Hotel, for which the name Queenswater um, came. And that was a popular site um, around the same time with the Long Beach Hotel, where people would come to fish, um, to duck hunt, um, et cetera. And this is a proposal to make a village of Queens, Queenswater. Um, however, at the same time they were petitioning um, Reynolds came on, on the scene. Um, this, this points out Pacific Boulevard if you were to go down to the south where Long Beach is, and this is the Long Island Railroad just at the western edge of the... the this map. is really getting into the history of maps because this is something that we would never think of today, and what you're seeing is that uh, as it uh, would have been developed, this did not happen. Uh, the, the hotel happened, uh, but the other pieces were not, not to be successfully produced. Next slide. Okay, so this is another map from 1907. I've, I've put up here at Grand Boulevard, National, Long Beach Road, and uh, Neptune, so you have some orientation. Um, this was a map done by the main architect of Long Beach, Charles Levitt, uh, who now they had a rectilinear, uh, a vertical and horizontal streets laid out. And these are all the streets that you're familiar with, except in this section. Um, anybody know any winding roads uh, to the east of the train station? And here's um, the train tracks right here. Riverside does station. wind slightly, um, and, and so does Park um, Place. Um, so this, this development is a proposed club called Sandringham, and Sandringham is named after one of the Tudor estates in England. Um, and this was going to be a very exclusive club. August Belmont, who is big money. Anybody watching The Gilded Age on TV? I think Russell is August Belmont, I would probably guess. Um, and uh, so this this is something that never happened. Um, the next slide. Well, say this one second. The red, before you ask the question, we don't know what the red really indicates, whether there was property, with lots that have been sold or not. And again, this is, again, a, 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 a vision of the Reynolds, but that's something that actually happened. Yeah, just to point out, this map was made before the dredging occurred. Before the dredging. Well, so, before it was called Reynolds Channel. Of course. It just says Channel there. Wow. I don't, I'm not exactly sure when it became Reynolds Channel, but probably by uh, 1922. Reynolds, Reynolds by 1922 it was. Reynolds Next slide. So it just shows you, you know, these winding paths and the Sandingham project. 
with tennis courts, uh, boathouse, clubhouse, and uh, some of the, so Belmont Road was in there. Apparently Belmont got involved with the Third Avenue elevated line in Manhattan and decided to spend his money um, elsewhere. Next slide. This shows, um, this shows uh, railroad tracks along what would be Park Avenue proposed. Ladies Lane, which is quite nice, Sylvester, um, Belmont Road. Um, next slide. So if we, if we go back one second. That map is right over here, so you, you know that that exists. And we're going to be talking about the map in the back in a few minutes. Okay. okay. So um, this is a house that was uh, said to be uh, Andrew Carnegie's house, whether he ever lived here or his mistress lived here or his wife lived here. I don't know, I'm not sure, but, but this is one of the most ornate of the Victorian houses. Yeah. Reynolds had a house um, that was somewhat similar. You can see the layout of the streets and the beautiful. Um, what year is that? Excuse me? What year? Uh, I don't know exactly when this is, but it's uh, this is the old town hall, which was built and finished in about 1923. Yeah. So this, would be, this would be definitely in the late 1920s. Uh, and this uh, particular house is still there. Yeah. Um, still there. Edwards and Penn. Edwards and Penn. Yeah. Most is that right there in Edwards? <coughs> right, yeah. The house right at Edwards, right? Edwards. Brenda's house is on Penn and Mortgage Road. Yeah. I'm not oh, sure right. where this one is. This is right. Edwards. Edwards, Edwards and Penn. Edwards at the time we're talking. This is Edwards and Penn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the other one's Long, Long Beach Road. Road and, and this is a little finished. down further. Okay. To repeat that, Edwards is a modern term after Edwards got assassinated. No. They named Jackson Boulevard. Jackson after. Boulevard. Yeah, it used to be Jackson. Right. Next slide. So this is a map from 1914. Um, got Woodrow Wilson. Um, this is now everything has been filled in. Um, and I've circled a couple of things here. Over here on Grand Boulevard, there's a place that later was called the Twin Manor. Um, on this map it says I Strauss, spelled with two S's, I, I believe it should be one S. Um, that was owned by um, the people of Abraham and Strauss. They also owned Macy's at the time. St. Macy's Church is right here. Both the, both the, uh, um, the Miss, Mr. Strauss was Isaac and his wife was, um, also the name became, became with I, according to um, they, they died on the Titanic, and if you saw the movie, the older couple that stayed together, apparently, uh, was probably based on the Strausses. Um, over here is, uh, let's see, this is Washington Boulevard. Um, wait a week, and Eileen Paulus over here, our cameraman and library historian, did a fantastic um, show um, last Tuesday on the Idle Hour, or the um, Pride of Judea Mansion, uh, which no longer exists. Uh, it was absolutely fantastic. Um, and uh, will be on, on the library website in a week or two. Um, so that was, according to this, it says um, um, Emma Condit um, Smith. And the legend is that uh, this house was moved from uh, Riverdale or the- uh, Riverside Lee, Drive. Yeah, Riverside Drive to Long Beach piece by piece. The sloot Eileen, I think, has proved once and for all that it, it was built here in Long Beach. Um, it's still a magnificent house if you ever see pictures, but you should look at this program because it's a real uh, interesting piece of, of Long Beach history. Uh, this circle is the current Historical Society building. Um, and it's a wreck of uh, the, the wreck area. And this is the, the variety of different, that's where the water treatment plant is and a variety of other services are over that area. Um, and this would be Reynolds, supposed Reynolds house here on Long Beach Road. One of 20 houses. Yeah. Um, the next slide. I've blown up um, this section. Once again, you can see the railroad tracks coming in here. Um, this would be Center Street, National Boulevard. Um, this is Riverside Boulevard. This would be Park Place, winding around. And over here is a number of uh, the buildings, including the power plant, uh, water, water department, and right over here is the Benjamin um, Molitor Queenswater Hotel. Do you remember just a couple of maps ago? You had the island of Queenswater. So that is that, that wasn't moved, 
Uh, this is where the water was down down here. So that would have been. This is where. This is the wreck lead that became Reynolds Channel, and down here someplace would be the inner beach lead, which was the body of water between the, the dunes of Long Beach and Queens Water. Um, I want to point out for historical purposes that um, in 1951, uh, Reverend Jesse um, Evans um, uh, came and started the uh, Christian Light Mission Baptist Church um, right here on Riverside or Park Place. Um, Sister Addie Bill um, Rita was a, owned a movie company with her brother, and she owned one of the original Riddles Villas. Um, she lent out her garage for the beginning of the mission uh, prior to it being um, um, moved uh, to its current location. So this whole North Park section was once a separate island. And again, what Dennis has been explaining is that these are the family names of the different houses. Yes, it's basically, on this map, they have penned in, and actually it's kind of very difficult. I spent months trying to decipher the, the names. Um, I think I got about 90% right. They would be like the owner at that, at, at that time. Um, some familiar names and some mostly non-familiar names. Can we go back one, go back one, Steve? This uh, map would really show you what uh, his, he, Dennis spent a lot of his time on, is all these names of the original people that lived in Long Beach. Those were the many mansions, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. In many cases, yes. Like quarter acre lots? Uh, yes, it, 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 you know, yes. Uh, the, um, Dr. Antonio Fanoni had, I think, two acres um, on the corner of, I think it was on Laurelton, uh, between Penn and Beach. Can we go back to that map again? I wanted to explain also that this is where you start seeing um, the houses higher up, and they built them on the sand dunes. And what they did was the city plowed, or the city Reynolds uh, people plowed the streets, and they pushed the sand up, pushed the sand up, and they have, they're very high. And they didn't get damaged in the Sandy event. And then there's beautiful homes if you ever walk down that block that are tied into the mansions of the, uh, the neighborhood. Okay, go ahead. So this here is an, another map of the estates of Long Beach, uh, looking more modern from 1914. Um, and there's a couple of interesting points here. Shelter Island was mentioned before. Mm -hmm. um, Here's Hicks Beach, so we know this is New York Avenue, and this is the West End of Long Beach, at one time called Black's Beach, called uh, Shelter Island. Um, but and not the Shelter Island. Not the Shelter Island. Uh, the island. island. Um, and once again, all the streets laid out vertical, and uh, but, but this is around. Um, this, is a, this is a startling uh, map because. When you get into the area uh, down here, as Dennis is going to explain, you get into street names that uh, you never heard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's Forest Boulevard, Dillmore Boulevard, Golden Gate Boulevard, Atlantic Boulevard, Golden Pacific, Athens Boulevard, and Euclid um, Boulevard. Mm -hmm. These would be in current Lido. Okay. So that, once again, this was proposal. These these maps never they, these um, streets never really existed, but they were. Um, still in the point of developing. And, um, and it's still trying to be the states of Long Beach and the, the dream that uh, Reynolds had. Next slide. Now, uh, nobody in this room has ever seen this map before <laughs> except me. Um, I, Pat hasn't seen it. Um, this is a map from 1909. It's on sale for $1,750 online someplace. Um, Joanne Belli and Phyllis Ginsburg from the Historical Discovery. Society discovered this just in the last week. Um, and I want to point out, this is Roosevelt Boulevard here. And there was supposed to be a pier going out into the, uh, into the ocean called the Rainy Pier. Um, it was never built because of lack of funding. Um, also, this line here is the boardwalk. This is Roosevelt Avenue. That's beyond where the boardwalk stops at Neptune. Here's the boardwalk, 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 essentially going out to Point Lookout. The boardwalk was initially designed to go five miles to Point Lookout. And obviously, 
That never happened. And uh, at least there was a proposal. Um, the sandy cam that I just showed you before would end here. So we have this whole narrowing, winding, sander hand developed that I never saw before. Uh, and um, it's very interesting. I'm having people with better eyesight than me try to decipher the names of the boulevards that are to the east here. One of them is Garden Boulevard. I think one is Stetson, and one is Dreamland, named after Reynolds. So this would have been all lost history, except the, the fact we got involved with Town of Hempstead. And again, it really illustrates the, uh, the dream that Reynolds was. He was a dreamer, and he had all these ideas, and he laid them down, and he put the, 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 the dream that was going to happen. And he ran into other problems, as we all know, in 1929, the stock market crash, and that did uh, Mr. Reynolds into a major problem, including the famous Lido Hotel, which we'll be talking about in a moment. Next slide. So, um, quickly, um, <coughs> Reynolds visited Eleanor uh, Roosevelt, shown here, uh, visited with Reynolds, shown here, um, in, in 1909, and it looks like they're on um, the new boardwalk. Um, the, this is the um, Hotel Nassau, both here and up here on the right of this picture. And this you, you, you have to talk about Reynolds uh, and Teddy Roosevelt. Remember, Teddy Roosevelt was the president at that time, and there was that whole issue of being connected as a Long Islander to the development of Long Beach. And if you take it back from there, it's, it's, it's this area over here on the right side. The next slide. And that's not the ocean, that's what? What's that? That is the ocean. That is the ocean. That's the ocean. Looking in. Uh, well, so stop for a second. This is the bathhouses. Nash had a, National uh, Bank. A plethora of bathhouses. I, I don't know how many, but this was people would come by train uh, and they would go down to the bathhouse in their, their clothing, change in the bathhouse, hang up their clothing, head down to the beach, go swimming, lay on the beach a little bit, go back to the bathhouse, take a shower, put, put on their dry clothes, and hop on the train and leave. And this is where the train came all the way through the beach, right? No, no. this is, no. no. By, by 1909 or so, the train was where it is now. But this is National Boulevard, and the train well, tracks once, are right down the block. Once the tragedy was completed, yes. So the first um, school was in the Nassau Hotel. Uh, this shows Minnie Atkins, who was the teacher for all grades in the one-room schoolhouse. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Apparently in this picture may even be some of Deb Wright's um, uh, children or grandchildren who went to school supposedly dripping wet at the time. We know, we know, we know a, for a fact that one of the Snow Brothers, uh, grand, uh, grand, great grandfather was in the picture too. Really? The Snow Brothers. <laughs> the school and before 1960 moved to Riverside Boulevard and Park Street. Next slide. Um, this is the original Central School on Magnolia Boulevard. Um, this may not be. I live there. You live there now? Okay. Well, you don't live there now, per se. You live on that area that became, the building that you're in was over here, at the, the end. This was the original building. This is got torn down. the original down. building on Magnolia? Right, that's the, over here. This is down the middle of the block. This is where the parking lot is. And then the, the <coughs> building you're in was right over here. And that building was sold by the school district to a, a private developer, and then he made yeah. it into condos and co-ops. So historically, the Long Beach became a village um, in June of 1913. Um, Reynolds was the first uh, president of the village. Um, and then it became a city, at least it was signed, the declaration was signed by the bill signed by Governor Miller on April 13th, just passed, 100 years ago, making it a city. And uh, in May, uh, Reynolds was selected um, the first mayor. And this is an amazing part of the story, the, the, the trolley and uh, the, the, the tower, of course, connected behind it. But uh, that trolley is referred back there, so Dennis, you want to pick it up? If you look back the there. Next, the next slide. So um, this, is a this is a blueprint of the um, proposed trolley. Um, it's dated December 1921. It, all, it went into uh, operation in February of 1922, so this is pretty close to uh, that time. Um, George uh, Vanderwerken, who was the main um, engineer for the dredging and the building of the city of Long Beach, was involved with that. Um, 
this um, shows along Park Street. But the original route of the, of the trolley was to go from Park and the center of town to the, to the West End, along Beach Street, and then down to Broadway. Um, this is Broadway, and all the way around to Maple, and come up and, and, and circle. That's not what happened. Basically, the trolley um, went through the West End, but then went up uh, New York Avenue, and back along the same route. And it would um, come to Maple, and there was a roundabout, and you basically, they would have to turn the trolley, like in San Francisco, um, with the trolleys, and supposedly kids used to go out and try to help move. <laughs> Was it one track or was it two tracks? It was one, one track, I believe. One track. Okay. Um, and it was probably to save, save money. Um, I'm sure they ran out of money. And in 1922, <laughs> when this went in, uh, there is a famous picture um, showing, taken from the West End Club, showing People's Church um, and the Park Street in the West End, which is all sand, but the, you can see the sewers going in and the tracks being laid. My mother was here in 1922 and talks about playing in the street, uh, sand streets, and her brother, two year old brother, learning to walk in, in sand on Wisconsin Street. Um, Excellent. Next. So this is a map from 1923, and we're getting close to the end of our story, which is interesting because it's the 100 years we're celebrating, but we're telling you the history leading up to the 100 years, which is probably more interesting in <laughs> my mind. Um, and some of these points, here's um, Rockaway Inlet in 1923. Here's um, Bannister Creek. Here is the Lawrence or the Cedarhurst Club. And you can see it's across from the ocean, okay? So now there's an opening here. The Atlantic Beach Bridge would be off, off the map. Um, and so uh, this would be the, the uh, western part of Atlantic Beach. Hicks Beach here, so everything looks the same. You can see the, the railroad trestle, Long Beach Road. Um, this is the Red Lee train station, named after what this used to be called. Uh, this is the Jekyll Island um, railroad the station. The village of Island Park right here, yeah. and Harbor Isle. Yeah. Island Park has had many names. Um, it's been Hog Island, it's been Jekyll Island, it's been Barnum Island, and now Island, Island Park. Now, but the, the, the thing that I find fascinating is that they proposed, didn't ever build, but they proposed a racetrack in the, uh, the canals area. See right there? <laughs> and here's the Lido area, which is, uh, is pretty much what it looks like today, except that uh, I'm going to show a picture that the, the dude, dude gave us. Uh, so, so Little Country Club that old? Yes. Little Country Club was there from the early 1910s, basically. Basically, uh, well, maybe not quite. Um, they started building the golf course in 1914 and was completed, I believe, in 1918. Um, this golf course is not the golf course you see today. It's a golf course that went from the ocean to the bay. Okay, this entire area was the uh, famous, was considered one of the best golf courses in the world, built by uh, Charles Blair McDonald uh, with Peter Lees as the um, Greens master. Um, and in 1941, when World War II broke out, the Navy took over not only the, the hotel, but the whole area and basically um, yeah. ripped up the golf course. Yeah. You were kind enough to get us to today. This is a, shows you a picture of the hotel and the backdrop. This is taken from the uh, east shooting west and this is Maple Boulevard and Broadway here. But what's great about the picture is you see the houses in the backdrop and how uh, undeveloped it was. And the other picture, which we have was even more earlier, it shows you the golf, co the golf course and the homes up in the Lido Dunes area. Fascinating. We're going to add this to the show for anybody. <coughs> Down here, I just put that in some of the names of the hotels and baths um, that were there. The Castle's Bath was very famous. Um, uh, the Hotel um, Deville and Troville, um, the Long Beach, the River. <coughs> this is the Brighton Hotel. This a picture, which my daughter got from a friend, it says DB Lifeguard. And I believe that is the Deville Baths 
Um, that's probably, that's a man who was born in the 1880s and was a lifeguard there probably in his 30s or 40s. Um, this is a picture of um, Jim Pop Haley, who is the first chief of the Long Beach Patrol, um, which was started in 1923. Yeah, so the tents were well, common for the lifeguards. So the quick history on the lifeguards is that the lifeguards officially become Long Beach connected, the city of Long Beach connected in 1923. So we're a, a year away from that. But uh, the, before that, the hotels and the bathhouses hired the people to be the lifeguards. And these guys all started their careers as uh, working for the bathhouses. And then uh, when the city of Long Beach came along and created the Long Beach Patrol, and there's some debate about some early pictures, and we contacted the uh, Long Beach, California, and they said, no, no, those pictures are definitely of Long Beach, New York, because we didn't uh, have uh, an elevated boardwalk that the picture revealed. So uh, the Long Beach Patrol is an interesting term. It's uh, rather unusual. Most uh, lifeguards call themselves the, a, a core or some other name of that nature tied into the, the town that they're from. In the next slide, and the Ocean Crest <laughs> building is still there, opposite on the, on the eastern side. And the hotel, when it burned down, the president, that hotel that you're referring to, the Long Beach lifeguards were involved in running over and saving people and carrying them literally out of the, the burning uh, fire. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Next. So this gives you, you know, blow up of like where the proposed <coughs> step was and the no can no um, canals. canal area. Next. Could you, could you show? Could you show the second or third slide? It has to do with a property. It's a property map. <coughs> Sorry. Second or third oh, wait, no, wait. slide. Hold on, there we go. They show Hicks Beach all developed. I'm not sure why it's taking so to go back. Sorry. It's not. Yeah, I'm not sure why these are blank up there right now. Well, those are the slides I took out. <laughs> okay, but... No, but not. that particular picture showed property laid out, and it was all over the marsh by X feet. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 No, there, there, was, there was not property. Those were, I think those lines are just indicating that they're... Like now, all those yeah. were drainage ditches. Oh, I see. I, we will. <coughs> Before we show in the picture of the Long Beach uh, Near Hotel, could you explain the, the, what happened as far as the building and then the... the okay, the we'll come back there in a second. Right there. Come back. Go back. Right there. Okay, well, um, the Lido Golf Course was opened in 1918, as I said. Yeah, the hotel was not there. The hotel wasn't there, and that was opened in 1928. It remained in private hands until the war. Um, it had gone bankrupt during the uh, Depression. Um, it was brought back and it started to be developed again when the, the uh, Navy took over. And this is the area where the golf course was for the, in the early 1920s. And that's the Long Beach High School. And the Long Beach High School is built on federal land that had been turned over to them they used to use this land for the uh, missiles, uh, the Nike missiles. And the Nike missile would have been down here. And the missiles are actually over here, and there's a silo that's still there. Uh, and uh, it's still all poured concrete. It's so immense it would cost a fortune to remove it. So they just left it alone. And the buses actually park when the storms come, and the buses pull up on top of the, the high land and protect them from being destroyed. That's why all the buses in the last uh, hit didn't get that damaged because they were able to pull up on top of the old Nike silos. So this is the, the hotel in 1928, and then we all know in 1929 the stock market crash, and uh, Reynolds uh, dies a few years later. 1931. So this was a bad cycle for Mr. Reynolds. And his idea was to build everything out to point of gap obviously didn't happen. Next slide, I think this is the Yeah. Uh, this is uh, on the, the corner of, of West Bay Drive and Magnolia Boulevard. Uh, the wreck would be over here, and the West Bay Drive would be here. And you'll notice this is the new uh, top to the old uh, um, 
both had both had this, and they raised it by putting in a copper, copper a concrete top, and they raised it 13 inches. So this brings, this walkway goes out to the pier. So the reason I want to show this is that the city has come to the determination that they need to raise all of the bulkheads to this height, so, so to prevent future flooding from uh, again hurricanes or northeasters or superstorms. And um, the question is, did the 13 inches really do it? But if you go down to Grand Boulevard, which I don't have a picture of, Grand Boulevard looks like it's a lot higher. Is it Grand Boulevard? Look at that one. Um, a lot higher. In Grand Boulevard, uh, the corner of Grand Boulevard, um, if you haven't gone down there, there's a dead end and there's a, 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 a dirt road street. A dirt road street. And there's a bulkhead that were put in by the city, and then they found out that the city shouldn't have put the bulkheads in, but that's another conversation. And then you go into the west end, and all the, the, the butt ends, the butt ends have all been raised higher. And if you walk around the west end, the, the, the butt ends are so high that you barely can look over them. And then you go into the canals, the canals have one side of the canal that's been raised, mm -hmm. and the other side is still the homeowners. Mm -hmm. So they've got a few problems uh, going forward as far as protecting the island from water. But the thing that I want to make sure you understand is that when you're buying a house in Lomage or you live in Lomage, whatever the case might be, uh, there is a, a unique difference in the elevations. And the elevations are really are not, it, it, there's no sign that says you're, you're going down the street or you're going up the street. But that really does pertain to how the impact of these storms would have. We all know that the area of Penn Street and uh, Olive and Walnut are pretty safe and uh, high areas between uh, Lindell Boulevard to about Lomish Road. But uh, the other areas of the town are very, very uniquely different. See? Everybody on your phone where you now see an um, uh, app for a compass, on the, if you go to the compass, you'll see the elevation wherever you're standing. Right. So it's really cool. So go to your compass on your phone and you'll be able to know where, what elevation you're standing at. So and again, for most of us who live in Long Beach, you have to get your insurance tied into the elevation, and, and that's to the insurance company. What is the highest elevation in Long Beach? Uh, I'm going to say uh, uh, the natural, well, not natural, but the highest, uh, the, the sand elevation would probably be about 22, 23 feet. Wyoming Avenue, at least 20 feet. 20 feet. Right up on the ocean. Uh, on Wyoming. On the beach. Right, right off Ocean View. Oh, Ocean View. Yeah. Nobody Very high. And you look back to it today. Wow. Well, that's, uh, the, the, that was the, 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 another issue. In 1979, and I was part of the writing of that grant, we wrote a Department of Interior grant in 1979, and we went, the, the grant built up the West End dunes, and those dunes saved the West End. They, they, they that's saved. Quite <laughs> well, depending on where you live, but uh, that, uh, again, the same uh, grant in 79 was used on uh, Roosevelt and Pacific Boulevard. And those have become the very big beaches. When I first saw the lifeguarding in 1964, the Azores, which uh, has a, 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 a bulkhead also, mm -hmm. was built of poured concrete 30 feet down to the ground. And we've got the water used to break every night on the, on the, on the Azores wall. Well, if you go down there now, it, it's, a, it's a good 100 yards from that wall to the ocean. Uh, it's all been uh, developed because the, the, uh, the groin fields were put in. Now, the groin fields have had different success and failures. Uh, if you ever go to Lincoln Boulevard, which is the surfing boulevard, you'll notice that there's a very narrow beach. And you go with one block the other way, each way, and you, uh, you have big, wide beaches. And you get down to Roosevelt Pacific, there are immense beaches. Uh, if you're walking down in the sand, there's a long walk from the back of the beach down to the sand and the water. So <coughs> it's unique to the town. And then you'll notice the boardwalk, we showed the picture, but uh, right here, uh, you can see how it goes in and out. And right here is where the turn is on the boardwalk. If you ever ride your bicycle, you notice the boardwalk goes out, mm -hmm. and then it goes back in. That's uh, connected to the shoreline that they put. And again, the, the, the surfers in town are, have been complaining for the last two years now that the surf has not been as good as it used to be because the, the bottom, when they filled the sand in, they filled the sand uh, in, and they sucked the sand out and made it deeper and uh, had a drop off, and therefore the wave formation is a different formation. 
and the result is that the quality of the surf or the surfers uh, has declined. Yeah, the waves form on the outgoing water. They, they do, and they flow, they form farther out, and by the time they come in, they're they're, 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 they're flattened out. From the beach, it filled in, and it drops. So and it has more the Jones Beach effect. Yeah. The, the, if you ever go to Jones Beach, the Jones Beach effect is that you have uh, tumblers right at the shoreline, mm -hmm. and that's more the effect. Well, anyway, I think we covered everything. Any other questions you might have? I had a question about a few years ago, or before, I think it was before Sandy, where sometimes in the, in the, after the winter, you would see some of those wooden, we had wooden jagged pieces on the beach. Those were not piers, those were jetties? They were, yes. they were, they were, they were not jetties, actually, they're called groins. They were called groins. Groins, but uh, everybody in Long calls them jetties. Did a jetty is only at an inlet. So, so but they serve the same purpose as a It does so serve the same purpose. Work. But the groins that they put in, and the wooden groins were put in in the 1930s. And then uh, in, uh, when World War II 20, broke out. 20. What's that? 28. 28. 28 but they, they didn't do it overnight. They did it over a period of time. Pat, so there were never piers on the shoreline. No, no. they were never Thank piers. You. They there you go. Yeah. What they did was raise the beach. My mother was a kid at that time. And the West End was bulkhead. So, so what happened was when Reynolds dredged, he bulkheaded where he wanted real estate. So when he pumped in the sand from Reynolds cha from the channel, those channels up to 40 feet in certain areas, 50 feet deep. Right. Don't forget, it was only like six feet deep. So all that sand, all that money pumped up, but the West End was bulkhead. So whatever landed in, the water would come off, and the sand would you know, rest in between the bulkheads. So the West End originally was bulkhead. No wooden jetties yet. By the ocean. By the ocean. By the ocean. Yeah. I, I yeah. have photos of my mother and father. Up the there's there's of the bulkheads. So at high West tide, end. my mother said she used to jump in to the water from practice. the bulkhead. It was no wooden jetties. But in the bay side, there were, uh, there were beaches on the bay side. Minnesota yeah. in the bay and Wyoming in the bay. And the lifeguards used to work the, those uh, bay beaches. Yeah. How many lifeguards got the bay beaches, by the way? So if you were in bad favor, you were sent out to the, that end. But the, the, the answer to your point is, if you've gone to the West End, you notice that the first house number is usually five or six. And that's because in 1938, the, uh, the storm that hit 38 destroyed the houses that were one, two, three, four, and five, and they didn't, re they didn't replace them. So that's why, again, the house property starts at an odd number on each one of the blocks, depending on what block you're on. Yeah, that's, yeah. I can remember the, there was a Northeaster in the December of 1992. And, uh, that's when all the, the, the boardwalk, and we must have lost three feet of sand off the beach. And you could see all the wooden groins. Yes. Yes. All yes. of the yes. wooden groins. Wow. Every, not a, they, they weren't even a beach apart. They were they, they just winds from the back of the beach into the water and about that high. And I, I thought they'd never be able to fill it in again. Up until the 1980s, uh, almost every beach had wooden uh, jetties, uh, as they called them, uh, on the beach. And they, they finally got ahead and uh, removed them, the, the obstructions of most of the beaches. Because they were causing so many lawsuits but people would go swimming and they'd be body surfing into the poles, into the wood. That, and now we have that same problem again. I'll give you one example the next time you're on the boardwalk. Go to Neptune Boulevard. Neptune Boulevard, at the high tide, there is no, no jetties anymore. They're gone. They're gone. But they're not gone. If you come back at low tide, you'll see the, the, the tops of the old uh, stones. So uh, it, it, it varies from beach to beach. And the Army Corps of Engineers have said that they did this because they felt that, that you didn't need it at certain places. They were wrong. Uh, they were right on one or two boulevards, like Long Beach Boulevard. They knew that they had a, the, the gas line in there. That, uh, and that gas line, they were afraid of uh, dropping the rocks on that and breaking it and causing a, a, a major problem. But didn't, didn't they leave out jetties? In other words, they didn't put a groin on every jetty. They left out five jetties where it should have been there, more. There, there are five uh, uh, boulevards that have the original jetties that have not been restored. Right, and that caused problems. It does in uh, three out of the five. So, yeah. There's one that they, they didn't, they were right on, one that they didn't do because of the, uh, the gas line, and three that they were wrong on. You know, the speed of the current picks up. Right. Right? So offshore, say, you know, from, from Jones Beach, I'm a fisherman for, I'm 70 years old, and fishing since I'm a little kid. <laughs> So I'm fishing my whole life. So I know where the deep water is, the shallow waters. 
not just you know from being on the water and, and fishing those jetties. Right. So as as the current, see the Jones Beach jetty was extended. Remember? Mm -hmm. Yep. Out, and that changed a lot of things. So as the current gets past the Jones Beach jetty and the natural current of a few miles an hour, right? One right. or two miles an hour, and everything changed. The depth getting close to the beach. In other words, say you went out 50 feet from the beach, the water would be 30 feet of water, right? Now, I'm just saying an example, it's 50 feet of water. So more water, more speed, the volume picks up as the natural current. And it's scoring wherever it can and building where it can. But most of you don't go out in the water. Jones Beach One, Jones Beach One. They put the the, the, the jetty in. That's called the jetty officially, there, and they put it way out. Way out. And they did the point lookout. They put in a small little one like this. Well, the, the, all the point lookout got sucked out. The sand got sucked out. Yes. So uh, he's right. They added that one, and now they have one that's as long as the other one. And then that was done just before Sandy hit, and that's why point lookout, which should have been destroyed, was was untouched. Untouched because of the protection that that, that sand and those two groins, those two uh, uh, jetties gave. Yes. I have a, a different subject.